At any given time, more than a third of Americans are on a specific diet, with weight loss as a leading reason. Most are going to be disappointed, because even when successful, lost weight is frequently regained within a few months. While most weight loss diets can help you lose weight, they may be unsuccessful over the long run for several reasons. Some people don't follow their diets carefully and don't lose much weight even from the start. Others may go off the diet entirely after a while because it's too restrictive or the foods aren't appealing. Some may engage in less physical activity as they consume fewer calories. But who hasn't heard of someone doing everything right and still losing minimal weight or regaining lost weight over time? Perhaps that someone is you. You can't pick the right diet if none of them work. According to a new study, popular diets simply don't work for most people. Or more accurately, they are modestly effective for a while, but after a year or so, the benefits are largely gone. While weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol measures generally improved at the six-month mark, results at the 12-month mark were disappointing, to say the least. While low-carbohydrate and low-fat diets both resulted in a weight loss of about 10 pounds at six months, most of the lost weight was regained within one year. So, why don't diets work? When we diet or restrict our food intake, we can cause some immediate detrimental effects on our body. About two-thirds of our daily energy requirements are for the essential functions in our body, just to keep us alive. These functions include keeping our heart pumping, lungs inflating, kidneys filtering, blood circulating, and brain neurons firing. And that's if we were fast asleep in bed, not moving a muscle. All the while, our body is doing some really hard work. Add to that the energy it takes to digest and absorb our food, for our immune system to keep us from getting sick or helping us recover from illness, for our body to constantly grow and repair itself, to produce testosterone or estrogen or progesterone, and having a regular period, as well as our normal daily activity. So when we aren't eating enough and or we exercise so much so that we lack the available energy for our body to fuel these functions, something has got to give. The body starts to prioritize. And down, and one, and two, what functions can it stop expending energy on that's not going to keep us alive? Diets don't have very much reliability. Five years after a diet, most people have regained the weight. 40% of them have gained even more. Common reactions to dieting therefore include tiredness and fatigue, reduction in sex drive, menstruation stops or becomes irregular in women, deterioration of quality of skin, hair, and nails, and feeling cold. All of these occur because our body is trying to conserve energy for vital functions. But what if we continue to restrict our food intake or force our body to expend more energy by exercising? One, two, well, three, we start to break four. down our body's own stores for energy. Yes, this can include our fat stores, but it also includes our muscles. We really don't want to lose muscle because muscle and our metabolism, meaning the rate at which we convert food into energy, are closely related. Losing muscle means our metabolism slows down. A slow metabolism often means rapid weight gain and difficulty maintaining a healthy weight in the long term. At this point, our body works even harder to conserve energy, so it will try to slow everything down. That means our heart rate slows down, blood pressure drops, digestive system slows down, which means you feel more bloated, constipated, or have more abdominal discomfort than before. Brain slows down, leading to difficulty concentrating, problem solving, and thinking in general. Metabolism slows down. Doesn't look good, does it? Even if you're not that bothered about the physical consequences of dieting, think about the way it affects your relationship with food. And almost two of the three pints that Henry bought will have to be thrown away. Neither Henry nor his wife cared for the new vegetable. Ever been on a diet to lose weight and it works for a bit, but then you seem to fall off the wagon and eat anything or everything you find in the cupboard because you're just too damn hungry? You blame it on being greedy or not having enough willpower, but it can be summed up in one word, deprivation. 
We also deprive ourselves by depriving our body of its natural weight and shape. Just like we are born with a predetermined height, we're also born with a predetermined weight range. This is called our set point range. Although like our height, our weight can be influenced by the environment, e.g. if we have suffered neglect and poor nutrition, it is mostly influenced by our genetics. In other words, our set point range is not easy to nor intend to shift. If we diet and lose weight, our body tries its hardest to regulate our weight and get it back to our set point range. It does this by sending out hunger signals, increasing the number of thoughts and obsessions around food, and slowing down our metabolism. If we ignore these signals, our body just works even harder to do this, so it can result in out-of-control eating. The myths that we can choose to lose weight below our natural range and that we can diet healthily are so damaging. We cannot change our genetics. Diets can keep us focused on body shape and weight as a means of feeling happy, successful, or lovable. The consuming nature of diet shifts our attention to food and bodies and takes away from our ability to think and give attention and energy to the other things that matter to us in life, our values and goals. When diets begin to take priority, sometimes our friendships, family, hobbies, and career can begin to fall to the side. This tends to make people feel more unhappy and more likely to seek ways to change or make themselves feel better, like another diet. For many, dieting is seen as the answer, but really it is the problem. Diets are largely ineffective in the long term and lead to a variety of detrimental physical and psychological consequences. To have a better relationship with food and our body, we need to work on acceptance of the body we naturally have. Stop depriving ourselves and kindly give our body the nutrition it needs to function. Otherwise, we will continue to damage our physical and psychological health and feel inadequate and unhappy in the process. Even at its best, dieting is a waste of time and energy. Let's face it, if diets worked, we'd all be thin already.